A roller coaster is shot out from the bottom of a hill using magnetic flux. The cart is shot out at a speed of 24.3 meters per second. So it's shot out from the bottom of a hill, which means it's going in this direction. It then goes into a loop with a radius of 9 meters. So then it goes into this loop like so, and it's going to go to the top of the hill. It finally ends up on the top of a hill, a certain height h above the original track level. If the mass of the cart with people in it is 1800 kilograms and the track is frictionless, find the total energy of the cart as it shoots out in the beginning. We can just use k plus u is equal to e, kinetic energy plus potential energy is equal to the total energy, which is a constant. And kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, and potential energy is mgh, because it's just gravitational potential energy, and that's the formula for gravitational potential energy. And then we just plug in. Well, the height in this case is zero, so gravitational potential energy just goes away. And if you plug in, you get 1 half times 1800 times 24.3 squared gives you this funky amount of joules. If you want to know the speed at the top of the loop, well again you can use k plus u is equal to e, but you just gotta plug in differently. Now our height is actually 18, that's the radius times 2, and when you do mgh, this is all mgh, you just plug in exactly what they gave you. Plug in 9.8 for G. And when you plug in for 1 half M V squared, well we know M, but we don't know V, that's what they're asking us for. However, we do know E this time, we just figured it out in part A. So you plug that in over there. And when you run through the algebra, you end up getting V is approximately 15.42 meters per second. When they ask you for the force of the track on the cart at the top of the loop, that's asking you for the normal force. And I drew <coughs> a force diagram here. I included the circle. And the normal force is actually the force of the track on the cart at the top of the loop. But then what you also want in your force diagram is the weight. And then what you got to know is that the centripetal force is always the sum of all the forces. In other words, the net force. In this case, the weight plus the normal force. And we're looking for the normal force, so we want to solve this for n. Or we could have just plugged in and then solved it for n later. I solved it for n first, and then I plugged in and I had to use the V that we figured out in part B. We just figured out the speed at the top of the loop, so that's 15.42. And when you finally plug in everything, you'll get 29,915.3 newtons.